During sexual intercourse, sperm enters the vagina and begin their journey. Sperm swim at a rate of about 1 to 4 millimeters per minute. During ovulation, cervical mucus changes, facilitating sperm passage through the cervix and into the uterus. The female immune system may recognize sperm as foreign and attack them. Some of the sperms will be destroyed in this attack. A pumping motion within the uterus help propel sperm towards the egg. Cilia, create a sweeping motion to help sperm to move inside the uterus, towards the egg. The egg releases an enzyme called chemoattractants that attracts sperm towards unfertilized eggs. These enzyme, chemoattractants, attracts and directs the sperm towards the egg. Fusion of sperm and ovum is called fertilization. Fertilization is possible only during the first 24 hours after ovulation. Egg is surrounded by many sperms, but only one sperm can succeed in fertilizing the egg. Others will be degenerated. Sperm passes through the egg membrane, corona radiata and reaches the zona pellucida. Acrosome or the head of the sperm releases an enzyme called hyaluronidase which facilitates the entry of the sperm into the egg. These enzymes dissolves the egg membrane and create an entrance for sperm. Soon after the entry of the first sperm, eggs secrete an enzyme which thickens zona pellucida. This prevent further entry of other sperms into the egg. Plasma membrane of the sperm will fuses with plasma membrane of the ovum. Sperm nucleus moves towards eggs nucleus and fuses with it. It is called karyogamy. This process leads to the mixing of genetical information of both parents. Female contains only X chromosomes. Male contains X and Y chromosomes. If X chromosome of male fuses with X chromosome of egg, baby girl will born. If Y chromosome of male fuses with X chromosome of egg, baby boy will born. This is how fertilization process occurs. Fertilized egg is called zygote. Following fertilization, zygote undergoes repeated mitotic division called cleavage. This occurs while zygote moves in the fallopian tube towards uterus. After the fertilized egg travels down the fallopian tube to the uterus, around 6 to 12 days after fertilization. It undergoes a process called implantation. The embryo's attachment to the uterine lining, known as the endometrium. Once the blastocyst contacts the endometrium, some of its outer layer cells, known as the trophoblast cells proliferate. Then they lose their cell membranes, merge and act as a single structure called syncytiotrophoblast. This multinucleate cytoplasmic mass aggressively burrows and digs its way into the endometrium and invades the uterine wall. It also starts to secrete a hormone called HCG. HCG is a pregnancy hormone that is crucial in maintaining the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum produces progesterone and stops the menstrual cycle. HCG helps sustain the corpus luteum until the placenta takes over hormone production. HCG is often used as a marker for pregnancy detection. Pregnancy tests detect the presence of HCG in urine or blood to confirm pregnancy. Elevated levels of HCG during early pregnancy are associated with morning sickness, which include symptoms such as nausea and vomiting. HCG also helps establish immune tolerance in the mother's body and modulates the immune response to protect the fetus from being recognized as foreign tissue. HCG plays a role in the development of fetal organs and tissues, particularly during the first trimester. 
Toward the mid of the second week of development, some spaces called lacunae begin to form in the syncytiotrophoblast. These spaces fuse together to form a network filled with maternal blood of the damaged endometrium. Finger-like projections called chorionic villi begin to extend like the root of the plant and are surrounded by a pool of maternal blood. Here is where the exchange is happening. Maternal blood rich in oxygen and nutrients flows into the intervilla space and diffuses across the placental membranes into the fetal blood. At the same time, waste products and carbon dioxide move from the fetal blood into the maternal blood for elimination, while the blood will never mix. Also, this process anchors the placenta to the uterine wall, ensuring a stable connection. The umbilical cord, which attaches to the fetus, transports nutrients and oxygen to the fetus and removes waste product. The umbilical cord is rich in stem cells that have the ability to differentiate into various types of cells, such as bone cells, fat cells, and are responsible for generating the different types of blood cells. The length of the umbilical cord can vary among individuals, averaging around 55 to 60 centimeters. The placenta is fully formed and functional by the end of the first trimester, around 12 weeks of pregnancy. It acts as a bridge between the mother and the developing fetus, facilitating the exchange of essential substances, waste elimination, hormone production, and immune protection. The placenta also acts as a selective barrier to filter out toxins, pathogens, and drugs that could harm the fetus. Also, the placenta assists in regulating the fetus's temperature, ensuring a stable and optimal environment for development. Towards the end of pregnancy, the blood vessels within the placenta become more organized and developed and adequately supports the fetus until delivery. As the delivery approaches, the placenta produces higher levels of hormones, including prostaglandins. Prostaglandins play a role in cervical ripening, which will help in softening and thinning of the cervix in preparation for labor. They help prepare the cervix for dilation and facilitate the onset of contractions. During labor, the placenta reserve oxygen and nutrient to ensure that the baby receives sufficient oxygen and nutrients even during the temporary reduction in blood flow caused by uterine contractions. As the uterus contracts during labor, the placenta begins to detach from the uterine wall. This detachment is a natural process that allows for separating the placenta from the uterus tissues after the baby is born. After the baby is delivered, the uterus continues to contract to expel the placenta. These contractions, often called after birth contractions, help detach the placenta entirely from the uterine wall and push it out through the birth canal. The doctor may gently assist in the delivery of the placenta by applying controlled traction on the umbilical cord or by applying pressure on the mother's abdomen. The process of placental delivery may take a few minutes to up to an hour. The doctor monitors this process to ensure that the placenta is delivered entirely and that there is no risk of retained placental tissue, which can cause complications if left behind. The doctor also examines the placenta maternal side for abnormalities. On average, a placenta typically weighs between 500 to 600 grams. Some people are advocates of eating the placenta, 
also known as placentophagy. They claim potential benefits due to the presence of various nutrients and hormones in the placenta. Such as increased mode, increased energy levels, enhanced milk production, and hormone regulation. Yet there is no scientific evidence regarding the benefits or risks of consuming the placenta. But it's important to note that there are potential risks associated with consuming the placenta. The placenta may contain bacteria, viruses, or toxins, and improper handling or preparation could increase the risk of contamination and infection. Cooking or processing methods, such as steaming or encapsulation, may not effectively eliminate these risks. Some countries or regions have specific guidelines or restrictions in handling placenta. Therefore, it is essential to be aware of local regulations and guidelines related to placentophagy.